Hi, Grace. Hi, nice to meet you, kind of. <laughs> to meet you, kind of. Ready for your interview? Yes. All right, question one. Why do you want to attend this PA program? So this PA program, when I was researching programs and I went on this program's website, I found that I really aligned with a lot about the mission statement of the program and its core values. So I really enjoyed the part about the holistic view of medicine and that the program emphasizes this when they're teaching their students. I find that mental, spiritual, and emotional health is just as important as the physical health of a patient. So that is something that I would really love to put into practice as a physician assistant someday. And also the part of the mission statement and core values that talked about inclusion and equity with patients. I worked in two geographic areas that were both home to minority populations. So a lot of the patients that I encountered were part of those groups. And I think that it's a really important thing and something that I want to do as a PA is close those inequities that some of these patients may experience in healthcare. So a lot of it resonates with how I would like to be as a provider someday. Can you give me a specific example of how you think mental, spiritual, emotional health, holistic view of healthcare could be applied as you're in your career as a PA? Yeah, absolutely. I think that if a patient comes in and if we only focus on their physical health, sure, that's a huge part of treating the patient. Obviously, we're here to make them feel better physically, but it's just as important to make sure that they are feeling okay mentally because their healing process and how they are um, processing anything that is going on in their lives, physically and mentally, it's going to definitely matter where they're at mentally. And just making a patient feel as though they are supported mentally and emotionally is going to really open up for a positive relationship between a provider and a patient. And that's something so important when you're taking care of someone to have that mutual trust between the two of them. Answer. We're going to go on to the next question. Uh, looks like the majority of your patient care experience came from the Lehigh Valley Emergency Department as a technical partner where you currently work. Yes. How do you like working there? I love it. I really have enjoyed working in the emergency department. I found that I love the pace of it and the wide range of patients that I've seen, um, whether it's age, gender, cultural background, their different um, chief complaints that they come in with. I found that I have learned so much. I've learned more than I really ever thought that I would from my first job in healthcare. And not only the patient experience, but the whole experience of being a part of a medical team has just opened up so much more for me because I always knew that I wanted to do something in medicine. I figured out that a PA was the route that I wanted to take and just feeling like I was like on a medical team, I was making a difference in these patients' lives just solidified my decision with my path of career that I've chosen. And it's been so beneficial to be able to see firsthand what a PA's role in emergency medicine is like and how they work in collaboration with the physicians and nurses and other healthcare professionals on each patient's case, but also possess individuality is something that has been so beneficial for me to see firsthand just to solidify my decision for sure. By individuality, you mean like autonomy, like working on their own and then also working collaboratively with uh, physicians? Right. Right. That aligns with my personality a lot. I love working with other people, collaborating. That's part of what the role of a PA excites me the most is being able to work with other people because that's something that I really enjoy personally. Mm -hmm. But also the autonomy aspect of it? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Being able to make your own evaluations and your own views on the diagnosis of a patient, the treatment of a patient, having your own voice is also something really important to me. Have you been able to do that in your role as a technical partner? Yes and no. I mean, often I am just 
being told what to do to help. And I am more than happy to do so. Obviously, that's what I'm there for. And it's just beneficial in its own to just be able to feel like I'm doing something, even if it's the smallest thing, just checking in on a patient and reporting back to a nurse and letting them know it just makes everything small makes the biggest difference. All right. And in this role or in any other role, can you tell me about a time when you had to deal with a difficult patient or a difficult staff member? Yeah, absolutely. I have found that we, well, we see a lot of patients seeking psychiatric care Mm -hmm. in the emergency department. And some of those patients, depending on what their psychiatric status is, can be a little bit difficult to work with, Um, especially those patients who maybe they, for instance, they're a dementia patient and they don't really know what's going on. And it's hard to kind of explain what's going on to them because maybe they don't remember it two seconds later or all they want to do is get out. And I found it sometimes hard to be able to talk them down. Sometimes it's taken multiple staff members to talk patients down, but eventually if we all work together, it ends up okay. And it's taught me how to handle different types of patients because I know as a provider, I'm going to have some easy patients and some patients that give me some more challenges. And all I can really do is learn from those challenges. So I take that and find the positive in any of it. Elijah, do you want to throw in one of yours before I go into my next one? Yeah, all righty. So we have a scenario question for you here, okay? And if you need me to re- uh, repeat any of it, just let me know. So you're in the middle of your didactic portion of PA school. Your class is currently taking a test for anatomy and you finish early. While waiting around, you notice that one of your friends is glancing over at someone else's test and that they are copying their answers. You know that your friend has been struggling with their grades and needs to do well in this test to continue in the program. What would you do? For me, I think that it is very important to be able to support your friends through a physician assistant program. We all know that it's going to be difficult, but with that point, we are all aware of the time and the work that we're going to have to put in to this program. So I feel like for me and my morals, I would have to say something to the proctor of that exam just to bring it to their attention. And then it's out of my hands what they decide to do with that information. But I feel as though we all knew what we were getting into coming into this. And we're all going to have tests that we feel as though we're not prepared for but we have to do our own individual best. And whatever that outcome is, we have to take that on as our responsibility personally. Do you think you would um, like talk to your friend about it at all? Or would you just go straight to straight to staff, to the I, proctor? If we are speaking after the exam, I would love to talk to my friend first about that because I think that maybe if it's a it's a big thing for them to say, okay, I did this, and maybe not a lot of people would do that, but I think I would take the time to talk to my friend and say, hey, listen, if you don't say something about this, I feel like maybe I should, but maybe you should go talk to our professor and see if you can work anything out, something like that. Okay. All right. Did you want to go back to your questions, Boris? Or did you want me to ask for more of mine? Let me see your next one real quick. I'm just doing a lot of scrolling here. Yeah. All right. And you took notes on that one. Excellent. Uh, So many notes. (laughs) Yeah. Let me actually, let me do one of mine and then we'll do your last one. Okay. Okay. All right. Grace. Yes. What are some courses or subjects you struggled with in college? I would say what comes to mind immediately were my chemistry courses. I think in the beginning of every chemistry course I took, I felt like I was drowning just a little bit. Um, But funnily enough, I actually ended up really enjoying most of my chemistry courses. I think I had the stigma in my head that chemistry is so hard. And with the way I took my classes in college, 
I was a year behind most of my other friends doing a similar path as me in the chem courses anyway. And so I watched everyone take them before me and I wasn't in them with them. And I just, I saw them studying for these exams and talking about how hard it was. And I think I really worked myself up while I wasn't in that class to think that it was going to be near impossible to do pretty much on my own without any of my really close friends. And I actually think it taught me a lot that I can do all of that stuff alone. So they were definitely my most challenging, but actually ended up being some of my favorite classes that I took. How so? I just, I, when I started learning and when I understood what was going on, I feel like that definitely helped, obviously. Um, but once I started getting it, I was like, you know what, this is pretty interesting. I don't think I want to do this for the rest of my life, but for the rest of the semester, I think I will survive. <laughs> so you did not want to become a chemist. No. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in the cards for me. <laughs> I don't think any of us wanted to yeah. <laughs> for like two seconds. Like, uh, that ended pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> did not want to be a chemist, but was interesting enough to complete mm -hmm. the semester. All right. And I just have one more follow on and then I'll unleash Elijah on you. Uh, <laughs> so just going through your transcripts, it seems like all of your research has an S, which I looked it up and that means credit, no credit. So it's satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Did your research have to be credit, no credit? So for my school, how they did it, for, if we did four credit research, yes. it, Or if we did four credit research, it had to have a grade because you'll see on my transcript, some of them have actual grades like A's, A minuses, uh, stuff like that. But if it was credits less than that, if you or if you were early on with like the four credit research, it was just the S or not that kind of stuff, so. Gotcha, so you didn't choose to make a credit, no credit, it's just the way that it was set up. No, no, my, that was how my college did it. I didn't have a choice in that. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. We were looking at your cast fund, yeah. we were wondering what the S meant. <laughs> it's really, the research aspect at my school was pretty confusing, how they did like the grading mm -hmm. and satisfactory, that kind of stuff. Okay. Was it a mandatory senior thesis? Um. No, so we, could have chosen out of multiple different things to do what was called a capstone at my school that could have been study abroad or an externship or an internship and I was planning on studying abroad but I was also planning on doing a four credit research anyway so that ended up being my capstone are you glad you did yeah, I am. I did really enjoy my research that I did at school. We didn't do as many projects as we ended up wanting to, but I did a lot of the behind the scenes work and I did help one of the um, senior researchers when I was a little bit younger with her honors research project mm -hmm. and writing a meta-analysis about the research that we were doing, which was pretty cool to see that whole process unfold. So I think there's a law where if you get a master's degree, there has to be some research component. I could be totally wrong, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the only explanation I could think of for why PAs have to do research and they're very condensed to your program. Yeah. So as far as I know, every PA program does make you do some sort of a research project. Do you have any idea what your topic would be if you were to conduct research in PA school? I would love to do something in neuro. Neuroscience was my major. I did, my research was, psychological slash neuroscience based, but more on the psychological side. And I found through another class, my molecular neurobiology class, we did the part of our lab was with neurons and identifying different neurons, growing them, like all the cellular type of knowledge. We used that and actually grew cells, which I thought was super interesting. Um, so I would see if I could do something that incorporates something like that or a neuro related disease, all of that I'm very interested in. So I would love to see if I could incorporate that into research in PA school. That's good. Research is lifelong. So 
even after PA school, you're still going to be doing research. Yeah. Yeah, research is so much fun. <laughs> All right, Elijah, go for it. All right. So you have the grades, you have the patient care hours, you have the shadowing hours. Now, if we had another applicant with the same statistics as you did, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you think you specifically, why would you be a good fit for our program? I think I stand out in the way that I can form relationships with patients. As I was saying earlier, I have, I've had patients from zero years old to 105 years old. So I've seen a wide range of ages. I've seen a wide range of cultural backgrounds, tons of different personalities I have come across with my patients. Um, and I feel it comes naturally to be able to just enter a room with a smile, introduce myself, be kind, maybe crack a little joke if it's feeling right with that patient, do anything that I can to make them feel even a slightly more comfortable in an anxiety inducing setting that healthcare can sometimes be for a lot of patients. And if I can leave the room and the patient has a smile on their face, or I feel like I did my best to put a smile on their face, that is my goal. So I feel like it sets me aside that I really care about the actual patients and I'm not just getting through this program to have a job to do something in medicine. I actually really, really care about their well-being and how they're feeling throughout their patient experience. Okay. Any follow on to that? Now, with regards to your cohort, right, because you're going to have classmates in the program, right? You know, what do you think you have? to offer them as well, you know, as a fellow student, as a fellow classmate? Yeah, absolutely. I love studying with my friends in college. I feel like it was really beneficial. I mean, I love studying by myself as well. I have my own methods that I like to do, but I find it really beneficial to help one another. And I plan on carrying that through in PA school as well, because I think it's so important to just lift each other up and try to you're not in competition with each other. Once you're in a PA program, you're all working towards the same goal. So you're less competing with each other and trying to just build each other up. And I think I'm pretty good at doing that. I would absolutely, if someone asks me to study with them, I'm there. So I think that I could get along with a lot of my classmates and that we could be beneficial for one another. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And last but not least, as your interviewers, do you have any questions for us? I would say, what is your biggest piece of advice that you think I should carry through my two plus years in PA school? I think that I, I can go first on this one, Boris. I think that PA school is more of a marathon than a sprint, even though every week does feel like a sprint. Um, I'd say, you know, just have the mental fortitude to just get through it day by day. Um, yeah, everyone wants to get the A, but realistically, you just, you have to make sure that you yourself are like in the right mental space. I know Boris is going to say something completely different. We have different uh, opinions on this, but I'm a big like supporter of look after yourself first because if you if you break down mentally, then how can you really push yourself to wake up the next day, right? So every day is going to be a battle. Um, that's something I'm going through right now. Um, I just feel like it's a like constant studying and trying to balance things with my family. And you know you're going to go through that as well, and you're going to have to find that balance for yourself when you're in PA school. Um, and I kind of like one of your answers earlier where you talked about you know PA school is not a competition because it's not you're obviously going to have classmates that do well right you guys you've probably studied more than your classmates have right but let's say someone gets a better grade than you right just don't let anything like that bog you down people grades are great you know it could be the difference of two points three points you know between you and the average and it, it doesn't matter so just take it at your pace you know do your best because you want to do the best for your patients in the future 
Um, some of the classes are boring classes, you know, like biochem, it's the didactic year, but try your best to learn everything because you want to do as well as you can in your didactic year because you never know if you're going to pull something even from your first year of K school and it'll help you out in your third year, right? So just all in all, just try your best every day and don't fall behind. That's probably one of my biggest advices I can give to you. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Elijah is definitely correct. I kind of go the other way on this because <laughs> <laughs> I'm really into growth and I think you should push yourself and you don't have that many opportunities in life to push yourself to the absolute max. And PA school is one of those opportunities. So I think you should see what you can do, you know, and what you can't. And when you just think you can't, then you probably can't anyway. Um, as jumbled up as that advice was. But basically, <laughs> I mean, I still think that priority number one, two, three, four, and five is your grades, how much you can learn. And then sleep, friends, family, eating, bathing, those are all after that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, don't become the stinky kid, but also don't become the, the kid that fails out, you know? So right. I think I'd rather be the stinky kid for two years who doesn't work out and doesn't eat as opposed to someone who doesn't become a PA, you know, because then you just wasted all that time. So, I mean, yeah, take care of yourself, but make your grades more of a priority, I would say. Um, my other one, I'm actually going to share my screen very, very briefly, just so I can show this awesome thumbnail. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Everybody can? Okay, yeah, that one. I'm proud mm -hmm. of this thumbnail. It took a while. Uh, <laughs> <but> so, <laughs> my first year of PA school, or no, Kind of towards the end of my first year, I ran into a few upcoming PA students in my program, I think at a bar, and they were like, oh, you know, what's your advice? And that night at like two in the morning, I filmed this video. Uh, mm -hmm. So this one has like some legit kind of advice that you don't really think about. But I remember one of them was prepare for emails, just set aside a solid hour, maybe to an hour and a half every week just to go through all the emails. Because new information gets added, new PowerPoint slides get added. Uh, information gets taken out and also gets put back into exams. So you just have, kind of have to know, like you have to be in the know. And all of that takes like clerical administrative work. So I heard a lot of people complaining about it. I was one of those people. But at the same time, it doesn't change the fact that you have a lot of clerical work to do as a PA student. Uh, so just kind of prepare for emails. I think I even use like a Jon Snow meme, uh, just like winter is coming, emails are coming. So definitely just prepare for a lot of emails, know that they're going to be there and just know that you have to be on top of them because they're very important. Uh, so there was one, two, I don't remember, but there was four really good ones in here. Oh, there we go. All right. So thou shalt not treat a test question like a real patient. So basically it's about the test. Get the questions right. Learn this small chunk of material. Don't even worry about applying it clinically and move on. All right, just pass the test. Your job as a PA student is not to treat patients. It's to pass tests. All right, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, this is important. That's important. Pass the test. Get on to the next. Get through school. Then treat patients. You know, take the pressure off yourself. Just one test at a time. The next one was, thou shalt honor thy mentor. If you have a mentor, <laughs> definitely heed what they say, unless they failed out of PA school. Uh, so my school kind of linked us up with an upperclassman. And they just gave me a ton of inside information. Like in this class, read the book. In this class, don't read the book. In this class, it's all in the PowerPoints. In this class, he likes to make shit up last minute. Get ready for that. So just like they've been through that. They know the little tips and tricks. Pester them until you get all the tips and tricks that you can out of them. Um, advice number three, thou shalt read pants prep pearls before and after each module. I take that one back. Uh, and last but not least, uh, thou shalt diversify thy study methods. Grace is good enough of a student. I think she understands you study for things differently. You know, if this isn't working, try something else. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. And I think there was other stuff in there, but yeah, watch that video. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. And actually I intended for that question to just be like, what is she going to ask the actual interviewers? Not me and you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I wanted to ask them um, questions about like what, do they think makes their program stand out from others? Mm -hmm. Maybe something that isn't so obviously found on their website. That was one of my main questions that I want to ask these programs. So, Absolutely. In my interview, I asked the same exact uh, thing that you asked just now. <laughs> um, I think I asked them, like, what, what advice would you have for me if I was admitted to your program? Yeah. Um, I would completely agree with both of those. However, I would preface it with you proving that you did go through the website. Yeah. You know, 
So for mm -hmm. instance, this is a 25 month program and this is a 26 month program. One is 25 and 26. I can't remember, uh, but basically make it clear that you research their program specifically. You are interested in their program specifically. They're not just a number to you. Uh, so go with like just even one or two numbers. You know, you have this many rotations. That's unique. I'm interested in blah, blah, blah. Um, you said this exact thing in your mission and values. I think so because X, Y, and Z. I think we're going to knock this out in the next 10 minutes before Zoom kicks us out. Um, <laughs> there was one program. I forget which one. I, I wrote it in your interview notes that you'll get emailed to you. Uh, but they have kind of a high attrition rate, as in like 10 plus percent of their uh, yeah. class failed. Mm -hmm. And that was up from 6% the year before and up from like 3% the year before. Uh, so COVID is probably the explanation to that. But I'd very carefully kind of ask about that. Like, I don't know, was COVID a factor in the attrition rate? Or maybe not mention it, but say specifically, like, what have you noticed in your time here as a professor? Uh, what are like characteristics of a student that succeeds and characteristics of a student that fails? Because I really don't want to be one of those students that you know, waste all their time and, and resources. I really want to be successful in this program. What are some characteristics besides just studying uh, that would make me successful? Yeah. So very, very specifically, I probably wouldn't say the word attrition rate. Right. Uh, probably sensitive about that. So I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> um, you got to consider their feelings, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'd say to those. Just like lead with something specific. Prove okay. that you did uh, do a lot of research and put a lot of thought into the program. Right. All right. And let's see here. I was just going to say very, very brief feedback overall. And then on each of the questions, sure. uh, Elijah, what's your overall impression? I thought, I think you're ready for an interview. Honestly, like you seem really confident in your answers. You articulate yourself very well. Um, I think Boris was making comments in your, um, in our little document for you that every time you said um, yes, absolutely. to whenever we ask you a question that kind of like solidifies your confidence and the fact that you're able to articulate yourself, yourself so well after that, like it, it's really good. Um, and you made it feel like less of an interview and more of like a conversation. So I, it's just the way you carry yourself that it, I, like the confidence really shines through. And I say, carry that with you through your um, interviews. You know, you, you answered really well. And if you, if you answer like that in your interviews, you know, you have the statistics and and all that. You have the patient care hours. And the, if you talk the way you talk to us, the way, um, the way you talk to the interviewers uh, for these next two interviews, you're, you're going to you're gonna do amazing. You're going to get in. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So much. Thank you yeah, no worries. <laughs> and if you don't, you get to yell at Elijah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yell at him. He's a nice guy. Um, I also forgot that like this Google Doc is live, so Elijah saw what I was typing. So I was like, "Wait, how'd you know that?" Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was reading it. I was reading yeah, right. It. I think it's a pretty solid comment. Like every time, it's like blah 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 blah. You're like, "Yeah." By the way, it's like, "Wow, okay, love the confidence." Because you'd be surprised <laughs> how many people we get that are just like, uh, or like, oh, I don't know. Like they, you can see just like the look of terror, and you didn't have yeah. that you were confident, you were ready. I really like that. Um, that being said a little bit more conversational, I would say, like you have a very like inviting, just relaxed vibe. So you're mm -hmm. easy to talk to, but you also didn't really piggyback any of the questions on us, which yeah. be careful yeah. if the person is like super stoic and very professional, maybe they won't like that. Mm -hmm. But if the interviewer is friendly and you can tell that they just are tired of this like formal crap and they want to have a good conversation, they want yeah. some genuine human interaction. Don't be afraid to like ask them a question right back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conversation. Okay. You know, like, by the way, did you, when you were a student, as, as a professor, when you were practicing X, Y, and Z, just ask them a question. Okay. Yeah. If they that's talk cool. more than you do, that's going to be good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, that, that's one. true. <laughs> Two overall okay. comments, I would say uh, more specific examples. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you fell into the trap of describing things, but not actually illustrating, not adding a lot of color. Um, yeah. And I know that because when you did that, the whole interview for me just changed. Mm -hmm. When you said, uh, it was like this little brief throwaway comment, but it was like when you had the dementia patients mm -hmm. and you were like, yeah, and they forget what you say two seconds later and it's frustrating. It's like, yeah, we've all been there. And that just yeah. brought me right back there. And it made it more of like this emotional, like bond, like, okay, you're one of us, you're a healthcare person. You get it. You've been there. Explain yeah. the same treatment plan 19 times over to Mrs. Jones, <laughs> you know, and like, <laughs> And getting it and it's because she's scared and stressed and, and demented right. um, 
but little tiny examples. It doesn't have to be okay. a big story. Little specific concrete examples go a long way. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So those two things I would add, not constantly, not all the time, but, but more. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's great advice. Thank you. More concrete examples, a little bit more conversation. Got it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that more or less sums up my, uh, my advice on all of these questions that we had. Um, oh, last thing. So whenever we ask to follow on, a lot of times we ask things that we wish you would have brought up yourself. Okay. Okay. And you'll notice yeah. that. So for instance, the first one, why do you want to attend this program? You kind of gave a good introduction, but without anything really specific and concrete. So you like the mission statement, you like the holistic view of medicine, you think it's good, the end. And I was yeah. like, okay, well, give me an example of holistic view of medicine. Mm -hmm. And you said, yeah, absolutely. And I wrote great confidence. <laughs> um, but then you just said, you need to make sure the patient is feeling okay mentally, good. And they need to feel supported emotionally and mentally. That's like half a step there. But yeah. How? Okay. So for instance, how would you make sure that a patient is okay mentally? Oh, are you asking me now? Okay. Um, <laughs> just checking in when you're going into a room, say you're going in to do X, Y, and Z, and you're checking on their physical health, or you're updating them on a test result that just came back. Mm -hmm. And instead of just saying, oh, this was the test result, this is what we're doing next, taking some extra time just to say, and also, how are you feeling about this? Uh, or how did that test result make you feel? If it's good news, you can stay and celebrate with them a little bit. If it's bad news, you can stay and just show that you're sympathetic towards them and towards their situation. And just taking that extra time just to ask, how are you? Not physically. It, I think it can make a huge difference in a patient's care. We're 83% of the way there. Okay. <laughs> I would use at least one specific like hand on the shoulder or look at their eyes, see how they're actually feeling. Are they actually comprehending things? Mm -hmm. uh, not quiz them, but like ask them, do you understand what is happening? Do you understand what this means? How are you going to incorporate this plan into your life? Uh, mm -hmm. Read their body language. Are they scared? Are they comfortable? Are they nodding? Do they understand? Are they in shock? Like those very, very specific things that make yeah. me understand you understand people, not just the right things to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, specifics, specifics, yeah. specifics, specifics, specifics. All right. Okay. Fair. <laughs> yep. Fair enough. And so I said, example of holistic view, you said that, and then feedback. Okay. So yeah, feedback again, specifics would be good. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to try to knock this out before zoom kicks us out in two and a half minutes. <laughs> so we don't have to send you a link. Um, blah, blah, blah. I enjoy working as a technical partner, working collaboratively. Okay, so I said, why is autonomy important to you? Uh, you said you like making your own evaluations. Uh, my voice is very important to me. Good. I'd say just maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, like, that one I felt, that. I was like, mm. <laughs> yeah. And the only reason I asked that follow-on is because you just said, well, working collaboratively is good. And I was like, well, what about individually? You just mentioned yeah. it, I couldn't describe it, you know? Right. So again, specifics. Uh, tell me a time that was difficult to deal with, a dementia patient. I really liked your answer there. Um, and there was going to be way more notes than I can give you in the next few yeah. seconds. But basically what that's trying to do is like a scenario question. Like, what are my choices? What can I do? This is yeah. why I'm choosing to do what I did. That kind of deal. Uh, we skipped that question in the interest of time. Uh, the reason I asked about courses you struggled with, obviously your transcript shows you didn't struggle with any, but there was one of your interviews that's going to be blind. So they don't know yeah. that. Right, exactly. So, and I definitely want to see if you'll get negative. Like, oh yeah, my professor was an asshole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you just took it upon yourself. Like this was difficult for me because of this. And these are the actions I took to overcome that, which you did, which I, I really like that answer. Um, and then Elijah, sorry, you have 64 seconds. Go. Okay. So basically the ethical question, um, my main thing that I was looking for was how you would approach your friend and if you would bring it up to them first, right? right. Yeah. So I, I made a lot of notes for you in there, but basically you would want to talk to them first and show that sympathy and ask them like, you know, if anything's going on in their life. Um, but you'd also mentioned that you would eventually have to bring it up to faculty and staff. Um, but you would give them the opportunity. That's the keyword that you would give them the opportunity to step up. And if they wouldn't, then as you know, a future professional, as a PA professional, that you would have to uphold the integrity of the profession by bringing it up to faculty. So that's, 
I, I have it all lined out in there, but that's typically okay. the general basis of like ethical questions. They yeah. say there's no right or wrong answer, but there's definitely a way to like approach these answers, okay? And I think Boris said he'll send a new Zoom link. So we'll just continue yeah. this in the next one. Yeah, I don't want to feel rushed because there's a couple more things <laughs> to get through here. Yeah. Just don't want to, yeah. that's it. You have five more minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. We'll just, I'll just leave this now and then we'll yeah, we'll jump in the next one. Right. Like two seconds. Here in a okay. Cool. Yeah, Zoom kicks you out after 40 minutes now, and I just... I can't it's getting less and less, man. <laughs> I'm trying to make us buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. All right. Um, there's a couple more things I want to touch up on ethical questions because it's important. Yeah. Um, okay. So not just that um, specific scenario. There's there's going to be a lot of scenarios like that. Like mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll have like an apartment one, right? Like, oh, your, your roommate hasn't paid his part of the bill you know, and you, you know that he's struggling with finances. Now, how would you approach this, right? So typically the main way you would want to approach any sort of ethical, ethical question is to take like a neutral stance. You want to you want to verbalize that, you know, I don't understand what my roommate's going through or what the, a post party is going through. Um, so I would talk to them about it, right? Because that's that's your job as a PA. You, you're supposed to take a neutral stance on, on things. You're not supposed to go in with judgment or bias even before you walk into a patient's room. So that's kind of how you would approach it. And then with regards to what you would do in regards to like situations like this, you would always try to find resources for them, you know, support them, see how you can help them get through their tough times. Right. But with um, specifically to this scenario that I asked you, you would have to uphold the integrity of the program. So you, that's something you would have to report. And you, you did, you did mention that, but the reason I asked my follow-up question of what would you approach your friend at all was because initially you didn't um, yeah. mention it at all. So I, I, I thought that you meant that you would just go straight to, you know, faculty, right? And that that can also be kind of a red flag, right? Because you have to you have to be able to you know talk to your classmates about it and you know try to be sympathetic towards their situation as well. So you wouldn't want to like. In, in a way, be like a tattletale. You yeah, know? yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's not me at all. After yeah. I did that, I was like, oh man, <laughs> that was not how I wanted that to come across, but. No, that's okay. So they, oh, like I said earlier, they, they will always say there's no right or wrong answer, but there's mm -hmm. definitely a way to approach all these answers. And that's usually a, a good way to approach them. Okay. Um, And I think mine was the last question. It was, why do you think you'd be a good fit for a program, mm -hmm. right? So. I think that a lot of students tend to reel, or I mean, sorry, interviewees tend to reel at this question, right? Because you don't want to seem like a show off, right? But I think yeah. this is really the time that you want to show off. But there's a way to do it where you're not being over the top and not being too like over encumbering, like saying like, yeah, I'm the I'm the best in my class, you know, like I, I study the most. Um, I think your example is awesome because like group work and then you mentioning that, um, studying with your classmates is a way to not only help yourself but also help you know your classmates succeed because right like you said in your comments here you said that it, it was not a competition and that you're trying to build each other up that's that's really strong because that you're right that's exactly how PA school is right now even for me like it, it's really not a competition we're all trying to help each other we're all trying to reach that goal of becoming a PAC so that was a really strong answer and um, even you mentioning that you can study in groups and alone, I thought was a strong answer answer because that that's adaptability, right? Because not everyone studies the same way. So the fact that you can group study and study alone shows that you would be able to adapt to the rigors or at least what PA school has to offer you. So that that's really good. I thought you answered that pretty well. That That's exactly the kind of example I would have recommended for you. It's in the notes here. <laughs> I wrote out like a whole scenario and you said, basically exactly that so that that was awesome <laughs> um i think that's it for my questions is Boris still here i don't see him you don't see me oh, there he is no no it was it was my on my part sorry <laughs> oh no uh no i think what you said about that is really good basically like why what makes you stand out it's uh the kind of value that i'm going to bring to the class you know help everybody else out so i totally agree with that uh, going back to the scenario, anything that can be interpreted as a scenario question, I gave you notes for this in the document we're going to send you, but basically there's just four steps. Identify the problem, get more information, come up with solutions, thinking out loud, and then choose one. Uh, the reason for that is because that's the process that you go through anytime something is legitimately difficult. Like, all right, what am I dealing with? 
What else do I need to know? What can I do? Here's what I'm going to do. And that also makes you seem human. So in this case, it's not like, all right, the right answer is to tell the faculty, boom, that's my answer. Makes you seem kind of heartless. Or, um, you know, I empathize. I'm an empathetic person. I'm just going to help them. Well, that's also incorrect because you signed a code of ethics when you started school. Um, but a human being would identify both of those. Like, man, she must really be struggling. I really don't want to lose her. I don't want to screw up her career. At the same time, it's totally unfair if everybody did that. Uh, so I think I would choose to talk to her first, but also say we need to talk to the faculty. If you won't, I will, is the standard answer for that. But you see how that makes it kind of more human. You're considering both sides of it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I would do with that. Uh, we already talked about, do you have any questions for us? Basically just prove that you did some research and also just that you're interested in them and the program X, Y, and Z. Um, that's essentially it. Questions, concerns? I don't think I have any questions right now. I definitely feel better getting it, like doing this. It was That's definitely good. important for me to do before the interview, <laughs> getting it out of the way. But I appreciate yeah, you so much for taking the time to come up with questions and to make comments. It was definitely extremely helpful. And I plan on taking it into practice on Tuesday. <laughs> when is your, your interviews on Tuesday? Yeah, my first interview is on Tuesday for PCOM. Um, okay. And is that your number one? Yeah. So first interview, one of my top choices. Okay. <laughs> what was I going to say about that? Oh yeah. Even if you don't take anything we said seriously, just the fact of like dressing professionally, getting on camera, being on time, doing it once makes the next time less jarring. So you're yeah. already like 10 times more confident than your competition because nobody else practiced this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm cute. hoping. I'm hoping this. Yeah, gonna, last you know, little. Away some of the jitters. <laughs> I'd say so. I mean, it doesn't seem like you have any jitters, but uh, God. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad yeah. I come across that way. <laughs> come across very confident. Uh, the only thing I would also do is if you're going to interview from there, that light behind you is a little. Oh my God, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm not <laughs> going to do it from here, I promise. I'm in my scary basement right now because all my roommates are home and walking around upstairs. So I was like, I can't do this upstairs today. Oh, that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but they'll all be at work on Tuesday in the morning. So I will be alone. I have a nice little spot with some natural lighting instead of that. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, it's test just, it out before. It's all difference, yeah. but it, it is kind of every, every time I look down, there it's just like, whoa, that, that light is really bright. Yeah, it's <laughs> small details. Uh, yeah. That being said, I think that's about it as far as comments go. Um, I think you're the one that said you are cool with me doing a before and after of your essay once you're in. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Definitely. I actually read it. I think I didn't see the very final version of it because it came together very nicely. Yeah. Yeah. I have everything on that Google Doc, uh, like my first draft and my final draft. So because I mean, I when I was looking up like how to write a personal statement I saw all these websites that had someone's personal statement and then their comments on it so I was like I mean you guys can absolutely use mine for something similar if you would want to in the future so for sure yeah um I was going to ask if you're okay with us posting this mock interview as well well after you're in yeah absolutely cool you can use whatever I've given you whatever I like, I like how he's like manifesting he said after you're in so well, yeah, sure gonna get her she's in. and second, I, get like, <laughs> I don't want any chance whatsoever of this affecting her chances. So like, yeah. you know, some PA school admissions person is deciding and they're like, oh, shit, she did this mock interview. That's unfair. And boom, that's it. Right. So right. do people think that? I, I don't know. That seems drastic. I don't think anyone would think that. I agree with that, but it could even be subconscious. Like, oh, she's privileged enough to like afford their services or whatever, even though we're doing this one uh, pro bono just because we're practicing doing this together. <laughs> uh, but either way, it's just. I could see somebody having an opinion that they may not even be aware of and possibly rating her lower on something else. People do subconscious all the time. So I would not want any chance of, you know, screwing up her chances of being in and having a good career. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wait until her first day in school. Which is already happening. Happen. Like, so my <laughs> rule of thumb with talking about people like patient encounters or any personal stuff whatsoever is a year. What was that? Sorry, I didn't hear that last bit that you said. Oh, did I break up? A little bit. Yeah, oh. a little bit. I wonder if it's my microphone. Hello. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> okay. My rule of thumb for talking about patients, for talking about people, anything that can affect anybody in any way, shape, or form, even just emotionally, is one year. Okay. So okay. it's not going live for a very long time. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for letting us use that. That's going to be very helpful to the channel, which was just monetized. 
Yeah. Twelve dollars, Elijah. We made twelve dollars this month. Heck yeah, dude. Yep. Bunch of money. Twelve dollars you didn't have before. Exactly. That's true. Let's throw away from a million. We're getting there. There you go. But anyway, great job. You did awesome. You're gonna kill thank it. You. Thank you so much for both of your help. I cannot thank you enough. This has been amazing. So I will mm -hmm. keep you guys updated on everything that goes on. Absolutely. All right. Stop Stop all your free PA friends. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Buy the book, forcethepea.com. I will, I will. Forcethepea.com, buy the book. <laughs> you got this. Just be confident, you got it. What's it's that? Yours. I said just be confident, that seat's yours. Oh, you're talking to her. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, yeah, so <laughs> me and Elijah are going to put our comments together tonight, so we'll send this to you probably in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay. When yeah, is the interview? You said Tuesday? Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday morning. All right, let's try to do this tonight. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Good luck, Grace. All right. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys soon. You got See it. Ya. Take care. Bye. Bye, Elijah. See you, Boris.